How's it going, Reef Keepers? Figured I would give you guys uh, just a view of the tank while I kind of talk about uh, amino acids and why I am getting them out of my system and or, you know, purging them out of, you know, my dosing regimen and everything else. Uh, because the last few videos, as I have mentioned, getting rid of, you know, amino acid dosing, getting rid of uh, salt that has amino acids put into it, et cetera, et cetera. You know, I've, it's not that I've been like, you know, challenged in some kind of negative way, but people have been, you know, very curious, like, hey, you know, what's this getting rid of aminos thing? Why are you getting rid of aminos? Like, what's the, what's the big deal? And I realized, well, <laughs> I started talking about it throughout all these videos, and I guess I haven't really explained the thought process behind it. I, I pay pretty close attention uh, to what's happening in the scientific community of reef keeping and not everybody kind of follows that as closely and sometimes I take that for granted. So here's what's going on with aminos. And by the way, before I explain it, just understand I'm not a science guy. I'm not a, I don't, I don't know this stuff. I just look to people who are well versed in this more scientific aspects of the hobby particularly microbiome type uh, science minds. And so I really kinda kind of picked up on the whole n potential negative impact of aminos uh, when Salem Clemens started talking about it on his Reef Recap series. And he cites plenty of other experts and other data and research that has kind of grounded his thinking about aminos, which is that not that amino, so, this is kind of the long and the short when it comes to aminos and, you know, it, and it's my understanding of it, right? So amino acid dosing or inclusion of amino acids in, you know, salt and stuff like that and putting that in your tank, it's not that they are going to like harm the coral. So it's not like you're putting poison in your tank that is, that is attacking the coral or something like that, or having some immediate detrimental impact on the animal. What's happening is amino acids going into your system, you know, when you're arbitrarily dosing them in or putting them in via a salt mix through water exchange, what's happening is those aminos are likely fueling pathogenic quote unquote bad guys that will then proliferate and strengthen and act negatively upon your coral more than they are helping the coral itself, right? So it's not that like corals don't you don't actually use aminos. There's it's nothing like that. It's no like conspiracy. It's just that these pathogenic bad guys, these bad actors in your tank, just like any kind of bad actor, um, it, including like things that would attack a human body, right? They, they are more adept at using any kind of fuel at their disposal to succeed and beat the quote unquote good guys than good guys are at using these things for fuel. So basically like good quote unquote good guys, they, will, they have a specific uh, need set and specific fuels and specific situations that and conditions that must exist for them to succeed and strengthen and proliferate. Bad guys have a much broader range of fuel sources and insidious ways that they can increase their numbers to overpower the good guys. See what I'm saying? Um, the bad guys are more flexible. And so like, taking aminos out of the equation, let's say there's a, whatever, a 5% uh, detriment to coral growth or something like that. But there's a far greater percentage increase in the overall biome situation within your reef tank because the bad guys, quote unquote, are not getting unnecessarily fueled by you constantly putting amino acid gasoline, so to speak, into their engines, right? So that's kind of the thought process behind amino acids. And that's kind of, you know, from experts, 
And again, because I'm not an expert, I'm not claiming that like, this is my research, this is something I know, it's not. I'm looking to highly intelligent people who are formally trained and formally educated and versed in this stuff to get my answers and inform my decisions about my reef tank. And it was mentioned to me, by the way, speaking of, you know, high, like people with a, t a ton of experience with reef keeping, um, Jake Adams used amino acids and he used acro power, right? And that's what I had previously used. That is true. Jake did use acro power. However, like, I think there's this, I think there's this like mystique around Jake Adams and he's put on this like, just like ridiculously high pedestal and people kind of sometimes expect his word to be like the last word in reef keeping. And I don't really subscribe to that. I mean, Jake was just a human like the rest of us. And, you know, he did not have a deep degree in something that would have allowed him, you know, to, and it's, by the way, he didn't, he didn't like bend his whole mind around figuring out the reef tank microbiome on a day-to-day -day basis. That wasn't really his bread and butter, right? He was a really good reef keeper and he used amino acids. So I think that, you know, he probably did some surface level science and was like, well, corals do use amino acids. And so therefore like I should be dosing amino acids and this is good and look at how awesome, you know, the Reef Builder Studio is. And like, I, I get it. I mean, but I think that's more of a, I think that's less a result of using aminos, that success, and more as a result of the militant regimen and deep care and, and you know, deep experience with coral keeping that Jake had. Um, so I, I don't really, that's not really, the fact that he used them isn't really proof to me of their efficacy, if that makes sense. So um, I just think there are other individuals more qualified to speak on it on this who are way deeper into the science of it than he was capable of accessing, right? Like he was just, he was just not on that depth level with it. There's no knock against him. That's just, you know, what I think of that whole situation when I look at it. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I am, I am pretty hardcore subscribed to, you know, the, the whole amino acid, let's dose, you know, these things and let's get products that are infused with them. And let's, I, I think that I am pretty well convinced that it's giving the, the quote unquote bad actors in the tank more of a boost than it is giving the actual animals that we're seeking to keep thriving. Um, so therefore I'm, I have just backed off of it and done away with it, uh, completely. So, um, yeah, and I have not seen like some kind of massive effect since I cut that off. Like I just, I cut it off and tank went through an adjustment period, probably is still an adjustment period. Um, you know, so if everything like dies tomorrow, I'll let you know, but uh, I don't, I don't anticipate that. Um, things seem fine. So, all right, guys, I just figured I would explain this on a deeper level insofar as someone who is like not a science guy can translate or you know what i have gathered from scientifically minded individuals who specialize in looking at this kind of thing right so hopefully it made sense sorry if it didn't feel free to discuss thanks guys have a good one